I'm Shirley Jones, and this is Gemma Winger's Hollywood. Academy Award nominee for The Godfather, so that's probably what you're best Wasn't known for. Boy, I'm pretty good, yeah. Yeah, and four-time Golden Globe Award nominee. Yeah, I never win anything. It's just like getting awards and no jobs. I'd rather get a job. I'm going to give me a piece of glass. I, know, I, I know. can't eat that You glass. eat regular. Oh, nice. <laughs> God bless. Thank you. God bless you. You take care. How about a kiss goodbye? Adios. Hello, I'm Martin Landau. Hi, I'm Florence Henderson, and you're watching Jimma Winger's Hollywood. We're here at the Oasis 40th anniversary celebration, and I have Scott Hinkle here with me today. Thank you, Scott, for being with me. Absolutely, my pleasure. And Judy says that you have a miraculous testimony. Absolutely. I go back before 40 years when Judy and her late husband, Charles McFeeders, were traveling doing high school assemblies. I was 19 years old. I'm Jewish and from the Jersey Shore, and I had been basically put out of the state of New Jersey on drug charges. So I'm at this anti-drug lecture with Charles on the first thing on a you know weekday morning in school. I'm sitting in the balcony. Now, I've cleaned up pretty good over the years, but I was about 50, 60, 70 pounds lighter than I am. Long hair, pierced ear, eight hairs, desperately trying to grow a beard. It wasn't working, but I was trying anyway. And I'm sitting in the balcony and he's sharing a story. I'm not interested, but I hear, feel something brush across my face and I hear a voice speak to me. And the voice said, Hinkle, listen to this guy. He's got something to say because you don't know everything. To make a long story very, very short, I'm Jewish and from New Jersey, so I don't have a clue about Christianity. And he said very little about it, but I felt compelled to talk with him. I borrowed a car found out what his schedule was, chased him 20 miles. We ended up at a NW Root Bear Stand parking lot, sitting in the front seat of his 1969 red and white Malibu Super Sport Chevy, which was a cool car. And he's talking to me about Jesus. I'm not getting that part, but there was something different about he and Judy. And I made up my mind, whatever they had, I was going to get it. And they're reading from the Bible and all of this. I don't get any of that. But there was something that I wanted. And finally, I bowed my head in the front seat of that car. And I just cried out in my heart, God, if you can do everything he's talking about, then go on ahead and do it. Jesus, since you are the gutter, I've been in the gutter, and I have no more options. And I made an amazing discovery because some, it was like something came in on the inside of me. I can imagine a guy, little painter's coverall, scrub brush and a hose, cleaning me out from the inside. And, I, and Jesus came into my heart and into my life. And really from that moment on, launched me into a lifetime of telling the world that Jesus will change their life. Within 90 minutes, I'm telling somebody what had happened. I didn't know very much. You know, uh, I just asked Jesus in my life, I don't have to do drugs anymore. Don't you knock him till you try him. And from there, we've spent the entire adult, uh, my adult life just telling people about Christ, traveling the world, helping people share the gospel, working in the streets and inner cities. And we were on the ground floor of starting the Oasis here in Hollywood. And also when it began prior in Denver during the Jesus movement at the Holy Ghost Repair Service. So that's a little bit of my story. Thank God for Judy, for Charles, for the Oasis. I'm grateful. They've changed my life. If it wasn't for them, I probably would be in hell today. Wow. So you were Jewish and you asked Jesus in your heart. You heard the voice of the Lord speak to you. Yes, I did. I mean, I didn't know. All I knew is that I heard that voice. Something rang inside me that what I was hearing was truth. While some of the things I didn't really understand, there was something ringing. This is truth. And all I knew to do, I mean, yes, I'm Jewish. I grew up in an Italian community, Roman Catholic, Jewish. So I didn't know anything about Christianity, but there was something real. And those are the days when crazy people would come into a church and they'd just tell you, you know, bye-bye. 
But um, You were that crazy person. I was exactly that crazy person. My story is Jesus took a crazy guy and made him normal, or close to normal anyway. So you went right into the ministry at that point? I did. What, what happened was the change in my life was so radical. Uh, they did an article about me in the high school newspaper because I got my hair cut, pulled the ring out of my ear. Uh, people started to ask me to come tell my story. A pastor and another local evangelist took me under their wing and had me begin to just share my story. And I, I was sharing my story in businessmen's groups, youth groups, uh, ladies' Bible studies with grannies and grandmas in there. And, and uh it, it was the heart of the Jesus movement in those days. From there, I went to a couple of Bible schools, um, have served in ministry all over the country, been a pastor, but basically, our, we feel, my wife and I feel like we're missionaries to America, and particularly the streets and the inner cities. And You still work with the Oasis? Uh, well, a little bit. I live in Dallas, Texas now, and so we're, we travel continually. I teach in a couple of Bible colleges around the country on evangelism. And whenever we can, we do some things with the Oasis, come here, maybe speak and that. But uh, they're like family with us. And I mean, after almost 50 years. So we're just ever so grateful for the phenomenal work, the impact they've made and are continuing to make in lives in Hollywood and really around the country. What did your parents say when you got saved? Uh, my mother humored me like you would someone who had just had a lobotomy. You know, like he's lost. My father, my father converted to Judaism when he married my mother. And he basically couldn't understand how I would leave Judaism and go to Christianity. And I explained to him, Dad, I didn't. The blood in my veins is Jewish. I mean, Judaism is an ethnicity as well as a religion. And, but they both gave their life to the Lord as years went on. All of my family did. My brothers, my parents, my grandmother. So, yeah. So you're saying God is really using the Oasis. And it's interesting you said the Holy Ghost Repair Service because I remember when it was called the Holy Ghost Repair Service. What a great name. Yes, it, it is. I mean, people would ask us, what do you repair? A lawnmower is no people through the power of the Holy Spirit. I was just going to ask you, what does is, what is the Holy Ghost repair? But he repairs lives and hearts and families. Yes, he does. And, I mean, broken hearts, broken lives, tormented mind. Jesus puts, it back, puts us back together again. We become new creatures. What do you want to say to the people listening who were just like you with the earrings and the hair and the outcast type spirit? What do you want to say to them? I want you to know that Jesus Christ really cares about you. He loves you. And no matter what situation you're facing right now, Jesus can help you. He can walk with you. He can deliver you. There is no thing holding you back or binding you that Jesus cannot set you free from. But you must call on him and ask him to come in your heart, come in your life and bring the same change to you that he's brought to untold multitudes and me. Let's pray for them right now. Would you pray for them? Absolutely. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and your loving kindness. You've done more for every human being that we could deserve by sending your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, anyone that is watching and listening to this, Jesus, make yourself real to them. Let their heart be open and their mouth call out to you. Lord, you promise us that if we call on you, you will answer us and show us things we do not know. Father, thank you for your love for every person listening and watching today. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Melissa Odin. She is the daughter of Judy Radke. Now, Judy talks about being in the ministry, having two children, and dealing with that. What was it like, you as a child, dealing with the fact that your father passed away, your mom's in the ministry, all that that was going on? What were you feeling? <laughs> You're going to make me emotional right off the bat. Um, you know, it, uh, I'm so proud of her. She was amazing. She was superwoman. You know, she ran the ministry, but she was at every cheerleading game. She was always there. So, <laughs> sorry. 
Oh, that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. She has such a humble heart. And I'm sure it must have been devastating losing your father. And then God brought somebody new into the family. And how was that for you as a child? Um, well, as a child, you know, I think I was the typical child where at times I, you know, would say to Ron, you're not my dad. And so, you know, for him to stick through it the way he did, um, but now, of course, as an adult, I'm so grateful for him, not only that my mom has him, but he's the grandfather of my children. And, you know, so we're very blessed that he came into our lives. And you realize that it is a blessing that if a parent passes away and then God brings somebody new in to have that person, that stability it is really important. But I know as a child, it's hard to accept that because you want your dad. And there's the, the a little bit of anger and hurt because why did God allow that to happen? Yeah, definitely. And it was a process. You know, I was a young kid. So just processing everything and my brother was even younger but um again like nah. you had to work through a lot yeah definitely so what would you say to people i am so sorry i, I love you this. i love well that's what i've always wondered because you always hear the story of your mom and then i i was a christian when your father passed away and we had heard how amazing the oasis was and the work that they were doing and i think everybody wondered why did god allow that and then we have these two children and you're living it you're going through it i mean i'm on the outside looking in but God had a plan and God had a purpose and and there's so many people in your situation who have gone through the same thing was there any time in your life where you turned against God rather than running to him or your mom represented ministry and and the love of the Lord but you're like I don't want any part of that um no not necessarily like that I would say there was a period of time in college where I questioned what do I really believe why do I believe it was it because I was taught to believe it and I was a psychology major and so I actually for my senior thesis I did a study on that I did a questionnaire I did the analytics and all of it and through that process I came out of it saying no, I do. I do have a faith in God. I do believe what I believe. It's not just because I've been taught that. And now I instill that in my children. And I just look back at my life and, you know, I feel protected and blessed. And yeah, it was a tragedy, but we've come out of it, you know, amazing. And our family is also close. And so I just, I feel grateful. You have the Spirit of the Lord and the love of the Lord. You're all believers, so that's the most important thing. Right, exactly, yeah. Do you work with the Oasis currently? Um, not work, per se. I mean, I donate, and um, I usually bring my son to the holidays, I, um, the holiday events, so we'll deliver the Thanksgiving baskets to the homes. Um, and or we'll adopt a family for Christmas and again deliver it and and so I feel like because I grew up in the ministry and I um, you know I would be at the Oasis almost every weekend I worked the cash register in the bookstore as a teenager um, I feel like he's growing up in a different sort of bubble and so I want to expose him to you know people in need and what they're going through and how you can help and so that's you know besides donating financially because I've grown up and I'm like okay this is this is a ministry where the money that you're donating you know where it's going and I can personally attest to that so that's you know where I would personally donate but physically um, taking my son to to those types of things and being with the families and the children and you know it's very, been very eye-opening for him to go to a one bedroom apartment where ten, a family of 10 lives, you know, and what does he say? I know that there are parents who grow up 
uh, with their children in a wealthy environment or they have their, all their needs met and then they take them down, for example, to Skid Row to show them what's going on, that there are people who live like that. What has your son said about this experience? Um, he's just said, wow, mom, like, you know, the, we, we went to one place where they, it was a studio apartment actually, and so they took their little walk-in closet and they had man-made built um, a three bunk where three were sleeping in the closet and then I mean literally every corner was you know where the beds were and and it was stacked to the ceiling of clutter and he was just like wow mom I just I can't believe people really live like this but they were so grateful and they were so happy and it's just yeah it's been a sweet eye-opening thing that I think has given him a a heart for people who have need, you know. So he's grateful for what he has. Would you recommend that for other parents to do? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. I think it's very important. I think, you know, the younger generations, they're more and more entitled and um, and especially if they do grow up in, you know, affluent neighborhoods or schools or whatever, it, it really is a bubble, you know, and I think they need to get out of that and learn to help others. So yeah, I think it's been an amazing experience. How can people donate to the Oasis? Um, I, I, I believe <laughs> through, yeah, I think, uh, I'm sure through their website, I would, I would say oasisofhollywood.org. Um, or, you know, definitely get on the monthly mailing list to receive monthly, you know, information about what they're doing. I, you know, I always like to do extra contributions to the back to school program where they provide backpacks for kids, brand new backpacks full of school supplies, the Thanksgiving program, the Christmas. Those are times when, you know, there's an extra need for finances. They send them to winter camps, summer camps. So I think there's a lot of opportunity besides the month to month overhead that it costs to run a ministry like that. So, well, God bless you, Melissa. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. I'm so sorry I made you cry. Oh, well, you have a great evening. Yes, no, that's so beautiful. You have a tender heart. The Lord loves you so much. This is Asher Odin, and he's the grandson of Judy Radicke of the Oasis. And we just talked to his mom, and your mom says that she takes you to places where there are homeless, where there are poor people, and she really exposes you to the way a lot of different people live. How does that affect you? Um, it's really fun. Like, you know, it's really nice to get, like, for Thanksgiving, we bring baskets of food. And for one Christmas, we did adopt a family, and we got, like, Christmas presents. And it was really nice. Like, it was so much fun. Like, oh, How does that make you feel? Really happy. I love doing it. it now, your mom talked about that when you saw that there were people, like a lot of people just living in a studio, how did that make you feel? Really sad. Like, I was happy to, like, help them, but, you know, it made me feel bad. Like, did it open your eyes to make you thankful for what you have? Yeah, it did. What would you say to your friends? Do you ever talk to your friends about what your grandma does or your mom does? Yeah, um, like I got one, like one of my friends actually did the adopt a family thing. And yeah, yes, I talk to my friends about it sometimes. So you got people to help. Yeah. And so you have a personal relationship with the Lord? Yes, I do. What could you say to people your age that you've asked Jesus in your heart? How has he helped you? Um, like, when I go through, like, a, a lot of hard times in my family, like, my family and my friends, it's, like, really nice just to think about, like, you know, God's always on my side. And, and he loves you. That he loves me and looking after me. And he's taking care of you. Yeah. Anything that you would like to say to the audience? Um, 
I think that what my Mimi and Papa did was really, really nice, and that I really loved helping them out. And family did. That's beautiful. God bless you. Thank you so much. This is Katie Rosales, and she's going to tell us how the Oasis has changed her life. Well, I first came to the Oasis in the summer of 2016. Um, I came here on a mission trip, and the whole point of the mission trip was to learn how to share your faith, how to tell other people about Jesus, how to evangelize, how to start a conversation uh, with somebody about Christ. And so the whole thing kind of made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> I really didn't want to do it. Uh, I felt very uh, unqualified. I didn't feel like I had the courage. I didn't feel like I could hear from God like regarding like what to say to people. And so through the training that Ron and Judy and the Oasis staff gave to us, I felt like I was equipped and I felt like I could do it. And so since then, I was able to go out on the streets of Hollywood. Even when I went back home to Texas, I was able to go back onto the streets of Hollywood, share my faith, tell people about Christ. Uh, my heart grew for the loss. I really felt like God would speak to me just as I went about my everyday life. So that's basically how it started, was just feeling like I could uh, reach the loss, feeling equipped to reach people. That's how the Oasis. You met your husband there, correct? Yeah. I met my husband, Minor. He was the leader of our trip. Uh, and he says that he, I caught his eye, but since he was working, he couldn't talk to me. He didn't feel like it was right. So he waited till I went home, contacted me. And so I would come out every once in a while just to visit him because we were long distance dating. And at, each time I came out, my heart kind of grew for the ministry because they work with kids, they work with teenagers. And so when I would come out to visit him, I would go with him to kids club. I would go with him uh, to Oasis Youth. And so each time I just felt like there was this connection that I was building with the kids to where when I went back home, all I wanted to do was come back to LA. I wanted to come back to Hollywood. I would cry because I just felt like my heart was just leading me out here. And soon I figured, I figured out that it was because God was calling me into youth ministry, that God was calling me into kids ministry, something I really didn't ever think that I would be able to do. But it's because of those relationships that I built with those kids, with those teenagers, that my heart just went out to them. And I grew a passion for them and I just wanted to be around them I wanted to serve them and so that's ultimately what led me out here is to do an internship then uh, I was blessed to be able to get hired on to Oasis staff so I've been here almost for two years and I've loved well no almost three years so I've loved every single second of it second of it every minute of it it's all been a blessing so the Lord was drawing you and now you're in full-time ministry. Yeah, full-time ministry. I never thought I never thought I would be working with kids and teenagers growing up. I had a heart to um, serve God. And so my mindset was always that I'll be a missionary, but I thought I was going to be a missionary like in another country, speaking another language, that I would go into these crazy like dangerous places that that was kind of my mindset. So I always kind of cuz I'm originally from Texas. And so I kind of had this mindset that I would be a a missionary but I never in a million years thought that it would be primarily to kids and teenagers that live in Hollywood but that's just what God does he put it on my heart I couldn't deny it I couldn't run from it I couldn't go do something else I didn't really have that much peace about doing anything else so followed him and it's paid off obedience pays off have you been saved all your life um, I first gave my life to the Lord when I was eight years old at my grandparents' church. Uh, and so I've always known about God, and I would, I would go to this camp called Camp His Way, and at the camp they would talk about sharing your faith, and so that always kind of like, it drew me in. I was always curious about that, but I really didn't get serious about faith and about following God and being obedient and hearing the voice of God until I was probably a freshman in high school. Um, just some stuff happened with my family, so we started being more consistent and going to church. We started, um, yeah, we went every week. I started getting involved in the youth group. And so when that happened, that's when I really feel like I started following God. So I've always known about God. I've always tried to follow him, but got really serious about it when I was in high school. Praise God. And I know that lives are changed. Can you tell us about a person or a youth that you feel like you've really helped them to change their life with the power of God? Oh yeah, for sure. There's this young girl, um, I won't share her name, but she, when I first came to the Oasis almost three years ago, she was so quiet that when you asked her, hey, how are you? She wouldn't answer you. She'd just look right at you. Uh, and then she'd whisper, her cousin would be standing next to her because her cousin also comes to Oasis. She would whisper in her cousin, 
cousin's ear to answer us. So then her cousin would tell us she said she's doing good. I mean, she just didn't talk to anybody. She was very closed off. Uh, you could tell that there were some like kind of just some like deep issues there. And so just being persistent, you know, it did get discouraging sometimes because I would try to reach out to her and I felt like she just kind of would put this wall up. But I was consistent. I felt like God just told me, you know, you need to invite her to go do things like outside of church. So we'd ask her, hey, do you want to go to the beach with us? Do you want to go out to eat with us? Do you, we're going to go do this. We're going to do that. And slowly but surely, she started opening up more. She started to laugh. She started to smile. And... Um, about a year and a half ago, she sat my husband and I down and just opened up to us about the reason the reasons why she was the way that she was. That just some stuff that had happened in her childhood that she didn't trust people. She especially didn't trust men. And so it was very hard for her to be able to trust us because on the outside she knew she thought they have good motives but on the inside she's like, well do they really? Because people I was supposed to be able to trust have hurt me before. And so just seeing that, how much she has opened up. She's now a leader in our youth group. She arrives early. She stays late. Uh, she actually flew out to Texas for my husband and I's wedding just to be there to support us. So uh, definitely the power of God in her life. She's asking for prayer. Uh, yeah, she goes to the Bible club at her high school. She's totally broken out of that shell, and it is only because of the power of God. This is Brenda Benet, and she has been with the Oasis how many years? 17 years. A third of the time. That we've been a ministry. What's that been like? Every year is different. Um, it's extremely great to work with kids and be able to be part of diverting them from necessarily undesirable behaviors. Um, like drugs and prostitution and drinking and tagging and gangs and uh, one of our we, we are changing the adults of tomorrow, one child at a time today. And I've been fortunate enough to be with the ministry so long that my teenagers from 2002 are now in their late 20s to early 30s and just thriving. And next April, I get to um, officiate a ceremony of one of my first teenagers that I mentored. She's getting married and it's just wonderful that she's made something of herself. What is the testimony that has touched you the most? Well, I didn't... So many things have happened at the Oasis. To be part of such a small and effective team for the 17 years that I've been there and to, just to see how Hollywood has changed, but God doesn't. Just to see how you think, okay, this child is going through this trauma, another child is going through the same trauma, but then you see God minister to each of those kids through you, but differently. It's amazing. God really does know us individually and he knows what we need. And that's the greatest thing about the Oasis. We're not a cookie cutter ministry because kids aren't cookie cutter. What is your testimony? Well, I kind of came to the Lord a little late in life when I was 28. <laughs> But God is good and he is faithful and actually I don't have like I was never really addicted to drugs or I was never really into anything I was just empty and my best friend is blind and I visited her at Christmas and She said go to church with me and I said, okay So I literally on December 4th of 1996 had a blind girl take me to the altar on a Wednesday night service in Indiana And that's how I got saved